right let's talk about volcanoes volcanoes are some of the most beautiful but destructive physical features of our earth uh, they tend to um, create a lot of media attention when they erupt and people are fascinated with them but as GCSE students we need to know a lot more than that we need to know where they're formed um, what happens when they erupt and how we can manage them so volcanoes where are they formed well three places uh, two of which are plate boundaries first hyperplate boundary where volcanoes are formed are destructive plate boundaries. We have a continental plate and an oceanic plate meeting. The oceanic plate subducts below the continental plate because it is denser. When it subducts, the rock begins to melt underneath because of the heat of the mantle. Because of that melting, we have a build-up of heat and pressure underneath the continental plate. This heat and pressure will cause a bulge to form in the continental plate uh, and mountains or bulges, hills will be formed pushing upwards. Eventually that heat and pressure will build up so much that um, a volcano and a volcanic eruption will occur. These eruptions tend to be quite destructive. So destructive plate boundary equals generally quite destructive and disruptive eruptions. The second type of plate boundary where we find volcanoes are constructive plate boundaries. Here we have two oceanic plates moving apart. As the plates move apart, the lava rises up, the magma rises up, and lava spills out from the gap. And again we have a volcano forming. The third place where we see volcanoes forming are what no, what's known as hot spots. Here we have a column of magma rising up in the mantle towards the Earth's surface. Now, hot spots are formed where the crust of the Earth is particularly thin. Where it's very, very thin, magma, these columns of magma in the mantle can force their way actually through the crust. Uh, this tends to happen quite gently. And a classic example of uh, this happening would be in Hawaii. Now, we have volcanoes in many different forms. Uh, volcanoes um, can be formed in many different ways and er the eruptions uh, can come in different forms as well. At GCSE Geography, you just need to know two of these. Firstly, shield volcanoes. Shield volcanoes tend to have very, very gentle slopes. The lava that is erupted out of a shield volcano tends to be quite thin and runny. This thin, runny lava is often known as pahoaho. That's the Hawaiian name for it. Uh, the lava will run for quite a long distance down the gentle slopes of the volcano and outwards. This keeps the slopes very, very uh, long and gentle. The eruptions don't tend to be very destructive um, and therefore we won't see a big ash cloud at all. Very little ash or smoke will rise from the volcano in these eruptions. The second type of volcano that we'll see and that you need to learn for the exam is known as a composite volcano or a cone volcano. And these tend to have much steeper slides. They're sort of the classic volcano that you see um, at on the news. Very, very steep slides, very, very destructive in their eruptions. These are the kind of volcanoes which create huge ash clouds and that we've seen recently uh, disrupting air traffic in Europe and in the UK and in other places around the world. Uh, they will also have uh, effects such as pyroclastic flows which may even destroy uh, a whole side of the the volcano, um, bl literally blowing the top off it. The lava that comes out of these volcanoes tends to have a much higher silica content, which means that it doesn't flow very far. Uh, if it's much thicker, much more viscous, and therefore it will build up on the sides of the volcano, 
um, making the sides even steeper. You'll also have a lot of ash fall, so unlike a shield volcano where the sides are, are made up of lava and only lava, we'll have layers of ash and lava building up uh, to create a layered effect on the sides of the volcano. Now, once you've learnt your two different kinds of volcanic eruption and volcano, you need to think about how can these volcanoes be managed. Lots of people choose to live near or even on the slopes of a volcano. The soil is very, very fertile, which is great for things like agri agriculture. And these places tend to be quite cheap places to live because you have a high risk factor. Volcanoes, in a way, are a little bit more easy to manage than earthquakes because we can predict them and there's lots of different ways that you can predict volcanic eruptions. I'm going to go through just a couple for this revision video. Firstly, uh, one of the easiest ways to predict a volcanic eruption is to measure earth tremors. So using something like a se seismometer and a seismograph you can measure how much the Earth's crust is moving and earth tremors tend to occur before a volcanic eruption giving you some sort of warning. Other things that you can use are satellites to look down onto the volcano to see if there's any major changes in land formation. Before a volcanic eruption you would expect to see uh, the land actually growing or bulging outwards. Thirdly, we can use things like boreholes. These are uh, holes which are bored or drilled down into the ground. You can then lower a thermometer uh, into the ground to measure the temperature of groundwater. Uh, as magma rises up to the uh, surface, uh, groundwater is going to be heated and that heat will give us uh, a higher temperature measurement and therefore we can see uh, whether there is activity happening within the volcano. So this is prediction, the first of our three P's. The other two P's are preparation and protection. Preparation, our second P of our three, uh, is all about preparing people for an eruption, making sure they're educated, they know what to do if there is an eruption imminent. It's also about preparing your emergency services and preparing a whole country in order to be ready for an eruption. So evacuate, evacuation can happen smoothly and it can limit the number of people who are left behind uh, to face the eruption. Lastly, we have protection. Protection is more important when we're thinking about earthquakes, uh, but there are some ways that you can protect against um, the hazards of a volcanic eruption. Things like putting in flood defences. If your mountain is very uh, tall, it will have snow on top of it. If a volcanic eruption happens, there will be an immense amount of snow melt, uh, which can cause huge mudslides um, or flash floods. Uh, if you have the flood defences at the base of the volcano, you can actually protect, protect against mass flooding of the lands around the volcano. Uh, you can also have things like uh, lava diversion channels, which can, you can try and use to divert the lava away from urban areas. There are lots of other things that you can do to try and manage volcanoes, so please do look these up either in your textbooks, your revision notes, or do a little Google search now after this video to add to your revision notes. Okay, good luck for the exam.